Oh, cool. Hello, everyone. Um, cheers, Brian, first, uh, for letting me speak at your event. I hope you've had a good time today. I hope you can all hear me, yeah? Is it all good? You can hear me? Cool. <laughs> yeah, didn't make the first session though, did I? <laughs> no, that's cool. No, that's cool. No. Um, yeah, no. Um, no, I appreciate you letting me have this opportunity to have a little chat about Intune. And uh, yeah, let's let's go for it. Um, so I think initially I can see everyone here. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide you all in a minute so I can concentrate. You're all you're all looking towards me and putting me off. Um, but um, just to get a feel, uh, just a few show of hands. Who is a config manager based uh, admin? Is it uh, yeah Intune based? So yeah, okay. So we're mostly. So, yeah, so we're, we're mostly CM guys, yeah? So I think th th really this is a session to, uh, to talk about uh, things that are happening in the cloud uh, and how you can potentially move towards Intune. Um, so before I start, guys, just to let you know, I'm going to try and record this session so I can uh, pop it on, um, share it out and pop it on YouTube later. I right, asked Brian for permission on that. Um, I didn't want to advertise that because you guys wouldn't be in the room otherwise, but you know, it is being recorded. So feel free if you want to go, you can go now and watch it later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have you still got tacos left? Yeah. Oh, well, that's enough to stick around. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I've got you on the screen. I'm going to watch for eyes going and things like that. Okay. Let's kick off. Okay, so uh, my name's Paul Wynn Stanley. Uh, I'm a UK-based uh, uh, config manager consultant. Uh, work for myself, Fire SCCM Solutions Limited, and uh, as Brian stated, I'm an enterprise mobili mobility MVP. Uh, have been now for uh, oh just over three years. And uh, while I mentioned MVP, congrats, Brian, for getting on the program yourself as well. It's no, uh, it's no easy thing to do to get on there. So congrats. So my uh, my Twitter handle there, SCCM Mentor. I also blog at sccmentor.com. And um, at the moment, I've been running a series around Intune. If you, if you've got interest in that, uh, and it's branded as Keep It Simple with Intune. It's a real simple step by step kind of guide thing to help you to get on board with Intune. As you can see, this is uh, branded here on the session itself as V2. So I, I did a, a session on um, bridging the gap uh, about a year ago now. Uh, you don't need to know anything about that. This pretty much covers a couple of simple things, but also goes into the new features and things that have happened over the last year. OK, so on the agenda, uh, I'm going to dip into uh, Windows Autopilot. Uh, in particular, I'm going to focus on something called White Glove. Uh, I'm going to talk about BitLocker and Edge in the cloud. Uh, we're going to touch on Win32 apps. Uh, I'll, I'll briefly dip into Feature Updates Preview, which is something I, I couldn't get working at all, uh, but just kind of show you that it does exist there and you can manage Feature Updates uh, via Intune. And then we'll finish off with uh, Security Baselines and how you can harden your devices. Okay, so hopefully, uh, let me do a quick show of hands again. Who, who's aware of Windows Autopilot? Yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, it, it, the message is getting out there. It's been, it's been out there for a few years now. It, it's a way of uh, deploying your devices, your Win10 devices, via the cloud. Uh, we're not re-imaging here. We're layering things on. We're putting apps uh, and profiles down on the device. And we're allowing the user to kind of log in, get all the settings that are pushed to them. We have to go through a little process if, you, if you're not aware where we have to upload information about the hardware. Uh, for example, the hardware hash and various other bits of information get up uploaded into, the, into, the, into your tenant. 
and um, a, a deployment profile assigned against your devices. Uh, and, and effectively, a user logs in, uh, it's recognized as being part of your tenant, and, and all those kind of apps and things come down. So the white glove experience uh, was introduced last year uh, for 1903, and it, it enables uh, IT staff or partners, IT partners, to pre-provision your Windows 10 PC so that it's uh, effectively fully configured and business ready before being handed over to the, to the end user. Uh, one thing you do have to uh, kind of check first is that your devices are able to uh, deploy with uh, what's called a user-driven scenario. And if they can sex successfully do that, then you're pretty much good to go for White Glove itself. Um, so I'll, ju I'll just bring up in the console, just to give you the feel for how to implement or enable White Glove. Um, so I'm using the uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center, which is a device management portal, which cut, cuts down a lot of the noise that the Azure portal has. You know, you're only really managing certain aspects of devices. This is quite a nice cut down console to use. Uh, and in here, we can uh, go into the device management for Windows enrollment. And uh, do, do, do. when we go into deployment profile, we can create a profile. Let's just put a test profile down. And in our out of box experience, we have to have a user driven deployment type, but here we've got a switch to turn on uh, white glove, simple as that. And that will uh, get the device ready for the white glove experience. Okay, a few few things to know if you're going to use white glove. Um, it, as I say, it applies for to um, Windows 10 baseline 1903 and above. You have to have an Intune license assigned to your users so they can do the user enrollment part of the process. Uh, you can only do this on physical devices. Uh, you can't test this out, unfortunately, on a VM in your lab if you want to see what White Glove can do for you. Uh, so the devices have to support TPM2 and uh, device attestation. Um, you have to uh, have the devices physically connected to the network. Uh, Wi-Fi connectivity is not supported for the White Glove scenario. And that's because to achieve um, the Wi-Fi connection, uh, an admin would have to choose language, locale, and that sort of thing, you know, where we pick the keyboard. Um, and really, we want to leave that part of the process to the end user. So we have to have the devices plugged in to, to run through the, the white glove scenario. Uh, and what will happen is that the uh, all, all the um, device targeted policies will come down from Intune as part of a provisioning process. And uh, any, any Win32 or line of business apps that you've got that are set to install in the system context but assigned to users will come down as well. Okay, so let's just give you a little view of the, the white glove process as it, as it runs through. So when you get to the OOB screen, uh, rather than clicking next and going through that, you can uh, hit the Windows key five times and that will bring up this, this menu. And quite simply, you select the uh, autopilot provisioning choice, the middle one there, to kickstart the process. Next up, you'll get this screen here. Uh, which uh, gives you some information. Uh, it tells you the organization that you're uh, building this in, but also if a deployment profile has been assigned and the name of that profile, and if you've assigned a user to the device. Now, assigning a user is, is kind of key, uh, and, I'll, and I'll quickly show you how to do that. But if you haven't assigned a user, or there's something not right with the deployment profile that you've set for your white glove device, then um, this little Q, uh, QR code can come in handy and you can uh, download an application, a companion app that the autopilot team have developed 
and publish to GitHub. And uh, you'll scan that code uh, when you're using the app. And that will allow, allow you to make changes on the fly and update them ready uh, to then click the provision button. So you don't have to go back and recycle the device and go through, uh, make the changes on the console and go through back to the UB again. So that's quite handy. So let me show you how to assign a user. Uh, so back in our uh, Windows enrollment section, uh, we can go into devices. And these are a bunch of devices that have been imported. And we can just simply click on, say, this HP devices one we want to uh, give to a user. We won't click on that, sorry. We'll, we'll click on assign user. So click on the device and click assign user. And then eventually when that comes up, we can we can type in a name there and assign that to the device. OK, once the provisioning mode is completed, we get this lovely uh, green screen. Uh, as you can see there, it just tells you the elapsed time it took, and that's the time it took to actually push down all those device-based policies and, and apps. Uh, we'll then get to the point where we can uh, press the reseal button. Uh, at that point, that will seal the device uh, and shut it down. And we can then pass this on to the, the end user, and they can just fire it up, uh, log in, and continue the process. Um, cuts down quite a bit of time uh, for the, the user. You know, we, we're not, uh, if, if, if you've assigned Office, for example, uh, to them, and it's, it's already in, built in there, it just cuts down that that waiting time, waiting for Office to hit the device and install, etc. But obviously, uh, you know, if you're an IT business that's dealing with different clients, you can just centrally manage all this uh, and push out the device to uh, to users. So pre pretty handy. Okay, so, so some other little features of... Hello? Hi. Um, I've got uh, a company who started to play with it. Um, they're dealing with small customers, but they're uh, a small MSP who uh, have got benefit from the approach of, of sealing that device and just handing it over so they can configure everything on, on site, uh, sorry, in their head office and just hand out these devices then. Handy for them. It kind of moves away from what, to me, it moves away a little bit from what Autopilot was trying to achieve of, of giving the device to a user and allowing them to unbox it and plug in and et cetera. But there's, there's, you know, there's a definite value in, in using white glove in those kind of scenarios for sure. Uh, and it's working well for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've not reported any real issues. They've only had a few um, issues around custom uh, policies, but they're totally separate to, to this, really. OK. So uh, as you can see there, so feature update supports uh, support has been added for Autopilot. So you can uh, attempt to feature update your devices from the, the version that's been that, that's been given to you by the, by the vendor. Uh, this doesn't take place in the OOB section, so you're going to have to wait until uh, first Windows Update scan occurs on the device for, for that to kick in. Uh, Windows Autopilot deployment reports have come out in preview. Um, now, unfortunately, I've not got any data in my tenant. I was hoping to be able to show you some of this. Data is only retained for 30 days, but let's just give you a quick view as to where that is. Uh, I think it's in this monitoring node here. And down here, we've got Autopilot Deployment Preview. As I say, nothing's in here, but that will give you some um, feedback on, on problems. Uh, what, what, one of the issues with, with Autopilot is the uh, when you have a problem, it's, it's hard to troubleshoot and find the exact issue. Um, you know, I think if anyone's seen it, when it's running through the enrollment status and it has a problem, it goes, Oh yeah, you know something's gone wrong. That sucks. Not not very helpful, really. So uh, this um, 
this report will hopefully help us in that those scenarios and help us troubleshoot. Uh, don't know if I said, but yeah, the data is retained there for 30 days. Uh, a couple of new features added recently. These are quite cool. Um, edit device name value for your autopilot devices and also edit the group tag value for those uh, devices as well. Uh, let me let me show you that and also explain what the group tag element means to you. Um, okay. So again, everything is happening in this Windows Enrollment Blade. Um, so if I click on a device now, I've got these two fields that will pop up here. One uh, device name, so I could rename it. And also I've got this group tag option. So for the group tags, um, we can upload this information when we do the upload of devices via a CSV file into the tenant uh, we, by simply adding a, a new column uh, called group name. And we can assign values against each uh, each item, each, each device. And that could be a tag such as um, HR department or finance or something like that. Uh, and then you can create a dynamic group within uh, Intune that uh, is based on this tag and therefore assign devices into that group as well. So when you create deployment profiles, you might want to have a separate profile for HR. They may have a requirement, heaven forbid, of being local admin or something rather than standard users. So you can use the group tag in that way to kind of change and modify and, and, and push out to different profiles, to different groups. So that's pretty handy. Okay, so that, that's just a general overview of, of White Glove. Uh, I've got quite a few topics to talk about, so let's skip on to the next one, which is uh, Microsoft BitLocker. Hopefully, you're all uh, you're encrypting all your uh, endpoints now. Um, you know, back in the day, we kind of just went, oh, you know, laptops only, or uh, we just we we're not really putting data on there. But there's no reason now not to just encrypt devices. Um, there's been some gaps in the cloud, and they're, they've been they've been filled quite nicely recently. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of MBAM, which is Microsoft's BitLocker admin and monitoring solution. Uh, and the reason for that is that it gives me a lot more flexibility and a lot more um, a lot more security than by, than storing uh, my information in AD. So this is a big win. This is um, key rotation is added recently. And this is one thing that MBAM has had uh, right from the start, the, the ability to uh, generate a new key if the existing key has been used. Um, and that just increases the security. AD, we don't have that luxury, that, that key stays with the, the object. And if that's ever compromised, then there's you know there's problems there. So by having that ability to rotate, we've got an advantage. And this has just been added into the uh, the solution in Azure. And it's been asked for for quite a while as well. There's been a lot of noise around that for for a few years. So that's that's a big win. Uh, another thing to consider is that we can now uh, silently encrypt our devices for end users. This has been around for a little while now, but uh, one thing I wanted to focus on, the fact that we can have no prompt at all for our standard user accounts. How's that achieved? Really simply. Uh, however, one of the one of the, uh, the options I've, I've found is quite confusing really, so I thought I'd just sort of highlight that. Um, okay, so to configure your endpoint protection, uh, uh, and, uh, Windows encryption um, settings, you need to go into configuration profiles and I've got an existing one here. Uh, okay, so
We'll get there shortly. Cool. Okay, so the, the two options that we need to take a look at. Oop. Uh, are these here. Warning for other disk encryption and allow standard users to enable encryption during Azure AD join. Now, the second one there, that, that makes perfect sense to me. I, I want to allow standard users the ability to encrypt and that's perfectly straightforward. So I, I click, I click allow, job done. But I, I'll still get prompted and that's because I haven't configured the, the option above warning for other di disk encryption, which is a bit of a weird one. So if I highlight this, let me just kind of read out what's here. So this setting prompts for any third party disk encryption on end user machines, selecting block or disable this warning prop prompt. That's exactly what I want to do. Third party disk encryption? Mm. Well, ignore that. Effectively, this applies to BitLocker as well. So if I click block there, that will, uh, suppress prompts and allow me to silently encrypt the device. Uh, the last thing we want to do is confuse the end users by bringing up a wizard for BitLocker encryption. You know, we, we get confused our, enough ourselves with these kind of settings anyway. They just, they're just going to be flummoxed by it. So there we go. Two settings, job done. Okay, so we can control... Um, TPM pin via uh, the cloud as well, but it has limitations. I just wanted to kind of highlight those because um, these are limitations we have in on-prem, but again, this is where MBAM comes into play. If you install the MBAM client, uh, that will allow standard users to create their own pin. Something we can't do in the console as yet. We can set it, but we can't... Um, they can't do it as a, as a standard user. To uh, to configure that, it's in that section again, just further down. Uh, down here for BitLocker OS drive settings, we can uh, allow startup with TPM, uh, TPM with pin, and we can enable uh, a maximum, uh, a minimum pin length. So you know, let's play havoc and uh, give them twenty characters that they want to type in. Yeah, uh, maybe not. Let's go for, uh, we do four? Yeah, four, great. Okay, but they're still gonna be prompted. They're still gonna have issues. We do have an alternative at the moment. It's a community-based um, script uh, developed by one of the uh, MVP guys over in Germany called Oliver Kaiselbach. And if it's something of interest to you, then definitely check out his blog. Uh, I'll, I won't go into the whole details of that, but effectively, He's created some PowerShell scripts and he's using service UI from MDT. Um, and you can download them from this link here. He creates a, a Win32 app, which points to the script. Um, and then publishes it in the company portal. And that allows the user then to type in a new pin. Uh, and that entry is then passed back to the device uh, in the system context and allows it to be set. So pretty cool. Hopefully that's one of the things that uh, Microsoft will will build into the solution uh, as they as they make uh, all feature improvements along the way. Okay, um, I hope the uh, the sounds okay. I keep getting flashed up poor network quality. Is it all good? Ah, cool. Well. Well, I have four children and I told them to stay off Netflix and YouTube for an hour. <laughs> it's whether they have or not, yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, yeah, Microsoft Edge. This is the Chromium release. And I hope to God you're following my advice and ditching the old Edge. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things, working with different customers... We try and promote working with, with a modern browser and everyone says, okay, put Google Chrome on there. Yeah, we're not going to use Edge. It really hasn't um, worked for Microsoft and they've obviously realized that and uh, Edge Chromium really is uh, pretty cool. Uh, in fact, on, on my devices now, I, I, I've kind of stopped 
installing Chrome and switch to this. Um, still preview, uh, what do I mean by that? Well, um, Edge itself went GA back in January, but the actual deployment of Edge uh, via Intune is still a, a preview feature. It really is very, very simple to implement. And, and I've got a quick demo um, to show you on really how simple it is. Um, there's no reason why you shouldn't deploy this. Even in Config Manager, it's built in if, you, uh, if you're on 1910. Uh, you can push out all the three uh, releases. Well, there is a Canary, Canary release as well. So stable dev or beta channels can be pushed out by Intune and they can all coexist. They're separate apps. You can run them all on one device. It uses a new app wizard for its configuration, and this is one of the new features of Win32 apps, uh, quite nice, and you'll see this in the, in the demo that I'll run in a moment. And you can also create an uninstall app, which is pretty handy. That's a new feature. Uh, it's only sort of 17 days old of now. Uh, and there are security baselines for Edge as well, so if you need to push out uh, proxy settings, home pages, that kind of thing, uh, that they've been available now for a couple of months. Okay, so how do we deploy Edge? As I say, it is really, really simple. We follow the wizard. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'm going to show you in the demo, so I'm not going to highlight too much on this, apart from the fact that it's a step-by-step -step approach, and you'll click next, 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 or previous, whatever, and then review at the end. Uh, here you go. You've got the choice of the three channels that you can deploy there. When it does deploy, um, if this is the first Win32 or app or script that you've deployed in, in your Intune environment, then it will push out something called the Intune Management Extension. And this is an add-on which is help, helping to extend the capabilities of Intune uh, and allow us to, to tap into Win32 apps and, and, and PowerShell scripts and get them onto uh, endpoints. The cool thing is, is that it creates some logs, which has been lacking quite heavily uh, in the rest of the Intune space, because we love logs. You know, we, we, we just spend most of our day looking through these things. And we can use CM Trace to view it as well. So big win. Uh, it dumps it in that folder there, uh, in, under the uh, program data folder. They're pretty easy to find. Okay, it's demo time. So let's configure Edge. And I've, I've been extremely cautious and I've recorded it because I, this, these things never go well. And I'm, I'm not going to trust the demo gods tonight. Yeah. So really, really simple. If you haven't uh, created an app before, you have to go into the apps blades and just add. You've got this choice of app type, but we're going to go with the Edge Windows Preview. As you can see, there's a Mac OS um, version as well, if that's what you fancy. In the first screen, it's just really app information, and I've decided to type in beta here because I've dumped out quite a few different releases of Edge. I need to differentiate between them, and I might want to stick this in the company portal uh, as a featured app if I want. Here we go with those choices of channel. As soon as I select one, I get this lovely logo come up, which uh, will appear for me in, in the portal. Something that's lacking at the minute in the Config Manager application that's auto-created, which the dev team are aware of and are going to fix. Not fix, but, but uh, change. Uh, and then we assign it out. There you can see we can create an uninstall if we want, but I'm pushing it out to a particular group, and I'm saying that's going to be a required app. Okay, and that's all I have to do. On the endpoint itself, um, now devices sync quite quite frequently, uh, but I'm kick kicking that now, and I'm going to go in and do a manual sync on my endpoint. And to achieve that, I go into the settings app there and uh, and, and force a sync. So 
here we go with the, the log itself. And if things are working well, I should start to see some flow here. And because I've recorded this, I know it's going to work. <laughs> um, it's flashing through and I'm going to see some bits at the top there. Um, you know, Microsoft Edge update setup. It's it's doing its job. I started clicking around here. I don't know why. I could have edited that out. But yeah, eventually, there we go. Edge has popped up. There's a recently installed app. Job done. Really, really simple. What didn't happen was uh, notifications. Um, so we're familiar with Toast notifications now and, and, and these popping up on our screens. But when I ran that demo, I had Focus Assist turned on. Uh, so I never saw these, and uh, so I captured those. It's just telling me, you know, if, if we're pushing out with Config Manager, we're used to seeing these things appear, and this is kind of replicated when we push out applications uh, via Intune. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's that's Edge, really, really simple, nice and quick to get the, the application out there. Uh, absolutely no bother at all. Okay, so Win32 apps is next. Now, Edge itself was a Win32 app, so we saw a bit of the process there for going through the new app wizard to configure it. Uh, but what if we need to create a Win32 app? How do we do that? How do we get it uploaded into the portal? How is that achieved? Again, it's very, very simple. Okay, to start off, uh, we need to take our application and can convert it into a format for Intune. So we have to convert it into this .intune win format. Um, to achieve that, there's a tool that we need to download from Microsoft. It's in their GitHub. It's called uh, the Win32 Content Prep Tool. And uh, there's an executable in there. Intune Win App Util, which we run from the command prompt. And the parameters that we need to apply to that are there. There's nothing else you have to do. So what we do is we use the minus C to point to the setup folder that contains our, our um, source files. The minus S points us to a particular setup file. This is the MSI or the PowerShell script or whatever it is that, that kickstarts the install process. And then we have a dash O and we point to an output folder and that's where it's going to dump the Intune WIM file when it's run through uh, its execution. And we can do a minus Q if you want to do that in quiet mode as well. Once that's created, we upload that into the portal when we create our app uh, and then we run through uh, a wizard uh, that sets the detect where we can set the detection method. We can tar target particular OS. Uh, and we can talk uh, as in you know x64 um, x86 and we can also select a minimum uh, I think it's a minimum or a particular Windows 10 baseline it's one of the two can't remember now um, so let's let's run through that let's again show you a little demo of how simple that is to achieve uh, no not doing that that's completely wrong that's the one Okay, so I'm going to package something called Sonic Pi, which is a little coding, music coding app that I quite enjoy, and I'm um, going to upload that into the portal. So this is running through its, its, its uh, process now, and as you can see, we've got this lovely uh, percentage bar increasing at the bottom there. Uh, it's going to compress the source folder and it's going to do some encryption, uh, compute some uh, SHA-256 hash values, and it's going to do a little bit of uh, detection in an XML as well, which it, it can apply as uh, when you upload it into Intune itself. There's the resultant Intune win file. So that's a 150 meg file done in no time at all. There is a limitation on the size of the apps that you can add. I think it's eight gig, so uh, you know, forget AutoCAD. That's not going to come down. 
Okay, so we create the app and we create a Windows uh, 32 app and we simply upload that intune.wim file. So as you can see, it's filled in some of this information for us already. In this instance, it didn't know who the publisher was. Pop the details in there. And it's got the install and install commands of similar to when we create uh, an application in Config Manager. So let me just pause that. Uh, so this is one of the new features listed on the previous slide, and that's the ability to add, add in restart behavior. Now, we didn't have this until recently. So we can um, assign a particular restart behavior dependent on what how we want the, the uh, app to uh, to behave once it's completed. Uh, so we've got four choices there. We can determine the behavior based on return codes, and you can see some re return codes just behind that. Uh, we can have no specific action whatsoever. That means that the, the uh, the install will suppress any any restarts. Um, yeah, so um, so brain which went for a second there. So we've got app install main force of device restart. So this option means that the uh, the Win32 install is allowed to complete without suppressing any uh, restarts. Uh, so if you have a hard reboot return code for example, then uh, a restart of the device will take place uh, two hours after install. A soft reboot return code, for example, will notify that the uh, the user that the restart is required to complete the install. So you can you know have different behavior even with selecting that one option. Uh, and then the final one, uh, Intune can force a mandatory device restart. So this means that a successful install of that app will just restart the device and it will trigger an immediate restart of that device. So that's one just to be careful with. Uh, you can add in some custom codes as well. Uh, depends what you want to you want to select there. Okay, so as I say, you can you can um, pick. Okay, it's a minimum uh, baseline release, and also the architecture there required. Everything else you can you can add in some memory requirements, disk space, etc. And as if you're familiar with application uh, configuration in Config Manager, we can add in the detection rule, and um, we can pick uh, MSI for example, or we can choose file, we can choose registry, whichever one we want to go with there. Uh, we can add in dependencies, which uh, is pretty handy if we want to kind of link things together. So we might say, to be able to install Sonic Pi, we need to have Google Chrome added in first or whatever. And then whenever we create something, we need to assign that out to a device or a user. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. And it's as simple as that. And the behavior for the install is exactly what we saw when we pushed out Edge. So we would be looking in the Intune management log, see if there are any problems there, and we'd see the notifications coming down uh, if we didn't turn off Focus Assist. Okay, let me just flip back to that. The last uh, item there is a recent change and it's a pretty cool one uh, which is uh, that you can cache your uh, Win32 apps on a Microsoft connected cache server on your Config Manager DPs but only if you're running in a co-managed scenario. So if you're not aware of what a Microsoft connected cache server is it's effectively uh, using delivery optimization uh, delivery optimization cache. It was originally um, launched as uh, Doink, it was called, which rem always reminds me of Scooby Doo for some reason. It's kind of that noise uh, the cartoon characters make when they get their heads hit or something. 
Um, so it was Doink, which was delivery, delivery optimization in network cash, I think it stood for, but it's been rebranded to uh, Microsoft Connected Cash. It's pretty handy, um, but there are some limit, not limitations, but there are some prereqs you, you need to be aware of if you're going to implement that. Um, the main one to shout out for, for the, the Win32 app itself is that the app needs to be at least 100 meg in size for it to use this. So if you're, um, you know, if you're, you're trying to push out WinZip, it's not going to use this connected cache. Okay. Oh, feature updates. <laughs> feature updates have been, as Brian well knows, this week have been a real pain for me. Not in Intune, but just in general. Um, that top screen is pretty much all I've been seeing all week. Um, and it's driving me crazy. But anyway, so feature updates preview. Uh, it's a new addition to uh, Intune. And as I say, I couldn't actually get this to work um, myself when testing it. But I thought I would highlight it as something that you can tap into. Okay, so what do you need to know about it? Well, your devices need to be running 17.03 and later. And um, hopefully they are. Well, even 17.03, they're out of support anyway, so they should be running even later than that, 17.09 at least. Um, you can apply feature updates for Windows 10, 18.03 and later. The devices will update to whichever baseline you set in the policy. Okay, so if you're going to go jump them up to 1903, that's what they'll go to. They'll be then be frozen on that version of the feature update, and they won't update to 1909. They'll just sit there. So you have to be aware of that, and you also have to make sure that if you want them to go to 1909, you're going to create a new policy or you're going to modify your existing. The uh, things to look out for, are if you're um, managing Windows updates already via the update ring policy, you've got to make sure that you have a couple of things set for this to work. Um, and these are the, the, the ring deployment, uh, the ring deferral, sorry, is set to zero for um, feature updates. And that feature updates are not actually paused and that they're actually running. So. Let me show you how that's done. Uh, if I can remember, my brain is scrambled. Okay, here we go. So if you're using the update rings feature, you can actually pause. Let's, let's click in here. I've already got one set here. Uh, I can actually pause these quality updates or feature updates. Now, if I have that pause, the, uh, the feature update preview feature isn't going to work for you. So you make sure you resume. Simple as that. Uh, and the actual deferral period. Now, you may have gone in here if you're using it and decided that you want to defer up the feature updates for 120 days or whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, but you need to make sure this is set to zero. If it's not, again, that feature update preview is not going to work for you. Okay. And finally, for feature updates, um, pretty obvious. Uh, Long-term servicing channels not supported. It doesn't do feature updates, so it's never going to work. And uh, Windows 10 Mobile is not supported for this as well. Um, and, uh, Windows 10 Mobile is not supported at all anymore, I believe. So here's a requirement as well, which is that you need to set telemetry on your devices. So the, you need to share usage data and it needs to be at least basic. Yeah. Uh, really simple again to configure and it's a device configuration but you need to go into device restrictions 
and in the reporting and telemetry blade set that accordingly. It does have reports and as you can see no data because it didn't work so data will, will populate in here at this present moment in time I have no idea what that data will be but we do have some dashboards and I don't think you can really see on there I think that's my screen but those are pie charts um, we all we all love a, a good donut ring uh, pie chart to dashboard now okay so I'm going to finish off really by talking about security baselines uh, in uh, Intune and how we can very very quickly configure those and what I tend to do when I'm when I'm uh, deploying devices with Intune is I'll set the security baselines as the initial standard which I want to to implement against the device and then I'll use the device configuration or, or any ADMX based or administrative templates and, and, and work those around these security baselines. But these are the ones I focus on first. I can very quickly harden the device using these. So in, in the on-prem world, uh, hopefully, hopefully you're using the uh, MSFT baselines, which you can download for each Windows 10 release. And you'll copy the, uh, the files there into your GPO central store. And import them in and apply. Simple to do, and I hope you hope you harden in in that way. In Intune, we have three options uh, at the moment. We have Windows 10. Uh, we have the Edge baselines, which I've mentioned earlier, and we also have some Defender ATP uh, baselines. Okay. So to uh, configure those and to set them up we go into the endpoint security blade okay and then we have this security baselines link uh, and then we've got this choice so there's the three we can choose from let's choose the Windows 10 baseline As you can see, I've pushed them out already. We've got this lovely, lovely um, donut ring here, and I've got some devices that aren't matching that baseline. And uh, it could be I've got a conflict, and I've got to look and, and discover where that conflict is and remediate that. But let's create create a, a baseline. So this is where I rely on a, a live demo, which would never, ever fail. And it's doing nothing. This is why I normally record. OK. No worries. Let's go back and uh, have a look here. One minute. Okay, so here's one that I, this is the one I created. Hopefully if I click into that, it's going to give me the details. I'm just going around in circles now, am I? Do, do, do. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So if I've created one, this I could have named it, and then this would have come up. Um, and I have all these choices here. Uh, so say, for example, I want to go with Device Guard. And these aren't the defaults. I've played with these. But um, so I want to uh, turn Device Guard on. Uh, the actual SEC baseline now, it's already configured for you. And it's actually configured in this way there you go so that's what the standard would look like and I can go okay is that going to work for me in my business um, 
that's scary okay could be potentially that's the most secure form but if i turn that on and there's a problem i can't remotely turn that off i'm going to need to go to every device and confirm that i'm going to turn this off uh, and that may be a drain on my admins and my resources so i might decide okay that's a bit too much for me so i'm going to enable without uh, UEFI lock for now confirm that everything's cool push that out and then i'm going to uh, switch it on again later uh, i have actually seen credential guard uh, completely brick a few devices based on an application so being cautious there and bitlock i used to have a few more configuration policies it policies in here but they've ripped it right out now because you can use the actual device configuration profile to sort of set the uh, set the standards but as you can see i can go in here and very quickly harden the device on how i want that to work for me as soon as i've hardened it i can then assign that out against my devices very very simple okay um and that is that so that there's uh, a link here so that, that's that's a view from the from my house by the way <laughs> looking out into into greenwich uh, not not quite um yeah so if you want to keep up with what's happening in, in intune itself um that first link there is the what's new link and that intune is updated on a weekly basis so it's very very fluid things are always happening it's very very difficult to keep up with it uh, and to keep on top of all the new features but that's your reference point if you think it's hard to keep up with config manager in a three month cycle in tune is a different different story completely um, and that bottom link there is uh, a link to the uh, companion app that i spoke about earlier which uh, allows you to do make the changes during the white glove process so and that is bridging the Intune gap in a nutshell. I don't know if you guys have got any questions around what we've what I've talked about. No. Nope. Uh, can you hear me at the minute? I've got. Say again. I've personally, I haven't, but I have seen some people talking about it on the net and they have used it, but I haven't seen, I think Brian, did you have a play with it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think the Sorry, go ahead. He's used, he's, he's used it on one device. <laughs> great, great. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. It. It's it's very early preview, isn't it? I don't, you know. I, I think what I found difficult, and I know we had this conversation, was that um, I couldn't actually find anywhere in the event logs that told me this was being managed so i turned on the feature and um nowhere there's no nothing i could see now i left the device overnight and it did update to the next feature update but i didn't know if that was just something it was doing anyway or if the or if the preview feature actually did its job and i haven't found a way of of, of, of tapping into the log files and going, oh yeah, okay, 
there it's saying it's managed by it great it's done it uh, and as you can see from the reports i've got no data in there so i'm assuming nothing's happened um i there is another view uh, a report view where i can see that two devices have reported as failed and one device says something like already in use or no data i can't remember the exact wording on, on that one but again from that i can't actually troubleshoot anything or, or work it out so i think it's really early days for that i know that um to set baselines is working well for me but again when that came out initially there there were lots of problems there around the reporting back and the compliance of it so and then bitlocker as well uh, initially had a few niggles so it's it's you know it's preview so you play with it does it work yes or no definitely doesn't at the moment for me anyway so uh, but one, one to test if you want to play with it give it a go see what you can do yeah yeah absolutely i mean i know it's working for sure uh, via the um the the windows 10 update rings and that worked uh, straight. In fact, I because I was playing a little bit and I'd set the deferral period for feature updates to zero, it actually went off and I hadn't got the um, the feature update preview assigned to the device. It went off and updated my device and I didn't want it to. I was like, oh, man, I wish I'd snapshot the VM now. So, yeah, that works. So why can't it in the other? Time, time will tell. Okay. Does anyone, well, I've got a question. Oh, go on. Uh, okay, so is that for autopilot profiles or is that for the baseline profiles? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think in the console, I'm not aware of a way of doing that. But I think what you could probably do is tap into the Microsoft Graph API and use that to export your configuration and make changes then, then, uh, Port that back in so that's automating the process but that's that's getting you know quite back end quite in depth but there's possibilities there but I, it, within the console itself i haven't seen a way of just copy paste as such yeah. um i've got a question for the for the room really and that's that's to say you know does anyone looking at those kind of things there does anyone see that the guys in particular, in particular who are config manager guys are you looking at the cloud? Is there anything there that you go, oh, actually, that that's, you know, Win32 uh, apps was a big win. Is there anything there that you go, actually, that we could tap into that and use that? Or are you still just, now nah, we're on-prem, guys. We're not moving there yet. So it, it's no. I was just saying it, it's 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 at the minute it's trying to fill those gaps, isn't it? It's the things that you you can't bring into the cloud at the moment, and it's just trying to work out how that can be achieved. Or it, you know, if you if you want to achieve it, you may never get to that point. You could tap in, use a bit of code management potentially. That could be a way forward. But it, but you know, is it going to work for you? I know, I know in the UK things are starting to move that way towards the cloud slowly but surely i think the first step for people here was get on board with windows 10 uh, and 
we're still not there. You know, there's a lot of places uh, still on Windows 7. They just haven't got the resource and the time. Then when they're, when they're on Win 10, now we can possibly start to think about the cloud. And I don't know if that's the same way that things are happening over in the US. It's a challenge for sure. Okay, um, yeah, that, that's that's it from me, guys. So, hope um, hope it's been interesting for you. I hope you've uh, got, got a bit of information from that. Um, and thanks again, Brian, for for having me uh, present for you today. Cool. Cheers.